I bet we all agree that airbags save lives, right? Well, the first airbags deployed in the market caused an unexpected high number of fatalities in women and children. After an extensive root cause analysis, it was found that the main cause of failure was that for simplicity reasons, the crash testing was done only with an average male size dummy. There must not have been a lot of women on that engineering team. <laughs> women make up 51% of the US population. Companies spend millions of dollars to market to these women, and it works. Women are responsible for buying 70 to 80 percent of consumer products. So shouldn't they be part of these design teams? We need women working side by side with their male counterparts on product design, engineering, coding, and testing so that the products that we use every day are safer and more inclusive. Unfortunately, despite the high pay and low unemployment rate, women are severely underrepresented in the technology field. Nationwide, women comprise only 19% of engineering graduating classes and 18% of computer science graduating classes. To me, these numbers do not make sense. I always wanted to be an engineer. I love technology. Technology is fascinating, it's exciting. You learn things every day. You work on things that matter, things that change the world. So why are women shying away from technology fields? Actually, it was not always this way. There were many more women in coding when the computers were the size of a living room. I love that picture. <laughs> Believe it or not, the shrinking size of the computer is to blame for having less women in coding. You see, in the 60s and 70s, boys and girls had no access to computers. I had no access to a computer when I was growing up, and neither did my two brothers, who also pursued a career in technology. Boys and girls had equally no access. Women and men were equally unprepared for a career in computer science. It was an even playing field where men and women could succeed or fail equally. Things changed dramatically in the mid-80s, with the personal computers coming to market. Families started buying computers and putting them in the boys' room, giving them an advantage. A survey with hundreds of students in computer science classes in the 90s found that parents were much more likely to buy a computer for their boys than they were for their girls, even if the girls were interested in computer. Boys started tinkering with code and hardware, while girls had no exposure. This familiarity translated into a gender gap in knowledge and confidence. Girls started falling behind, losing confidence, 
and avoiding technology fields. National organizations like Girls Who Code and Girls in Tech are trying to close that exposure gap. But what can we do here in our own community? I have an example for you. Girls in Tech is a summit that I have supported for the last few years. It is a partnership between GE and UNCW. We bring 130 girls, middle school girls together for a day in technology. They hear an engineer talk about her career, how did she choose it, what does she do every day. They learn about new technology concepts like the Internet of Things and how does it work. And then we divide them into teams, assign them a coach, and give them a hands-on activity. And this year's hands-on activity was a ring application. I am sure that some of you have seen that this is a commercial product, security product, that is available on the market. What it's supposed to do is that when someone comes to your door, they ring the doorbell, it snaps a picture, and sends it to your cell phone. Well, our girls were tasked with building their own Ring application. We did some of the programming for them, but they had to follow directions, they have to move the files on the computer, they had to wire the circuit boards and connect them to the computer. And when they were ready to press that button and the picture would get snapped, it would project on a big screen, adding to the competition in the room. You should have seen the excitement in the eyes of these girls. Some of these girls had never worked on a computer before. And yet, here they were, creating their own technology product. For some of these girls, that day in technology is about interacting with the female engineers and role models. For others, it is their first opportunity to work on a technology where it's a safe environment and their lack of exposure is not an obstacle to success. Exposure is so important. With this program alone, we have touched the lives of more than 1,200 girls in our community. And I am really hoping that many of these girls will consider careers in technology. Now, I would like you to think of a little girl in your life. Your daughter, granddaughter, niece. Imagine her all grown up. What do you think of her doing for a career? A group of parents was, were asked the same question. And here are the results. The gray bars represent boys. The orange bars represent girls. Parents of boys thought of their boys going ca in careers in computers, science, engineering, and sports. Parents of girls thought of their daughters going in careers in health, teaching, um, art, and beauty. It is interesting, isn't it? 34% of girls would choose computer science as a career on their own. If they are encouraged by a parent, that number goes up to 65%. You have a huge influence on your kids. You might not know it, 
what you do. Girls are not good at math. Have you heard that before? Girls and boys start kindergarten with the exact same level of proficiency in math. But gaps in performance and confidence appear by grade three. Studies show that teachers consistently underrated girls' math abilities, even if they performed exactly the same way in the classroom. Studies also show that girls from all girls' schools do better in math standardized tests than girls from co-ed schools because they are not compared to the boys that are perceived to be better at math. These gender gaps impact girls' confidence and get them to give up on technology careers. We have to build our girls' confidence. There is a study by the Department of Education that says that children, confidence, and belief in their abilities is key to their interest and performance in subjects. It is their belief in their abilities that impacts the performance, not the other way around. It is key to the classes they choose, to the after-school programs they pursue, and ultimately, the careers they go for. We need to help our girls build confidence. Continue to give enforcement to your girls. Continue to encourage them. Do not underestimate the power of such a simple effort. I am a woman in technology, and I am also a mother and a grandmother. Recently, I bought my two-year-old granddaughter a robot. She calls it her spaceman. It does not replace her princesses, but they coexist happily. He's invited to their tea parties. <laughs> and you can see him here sitting on Princess Jasmine's lap. <laughs> she is fascinated by the remote and the eyes that light up. She is too young to understand the technology, take it apart. But it is her first exposure. I am building a small bridge for her. And as she grows older, the bridge will expand. National and local organizations are working together to bridge the gap for our girls, to provide them that exposure and the confidence that is needed. And I am here today to ask you to help us building that bridge for the girls in your lives, your daughters, granddaughters, sisters, nieces, neighbors, students. Think of them as technologists so that they can think of themselves this way too. Thank you.